for the first part. Everyone ready? Sure. Very good. Good. So, um, yeah. Like each year, welcome. Thanks for coming. The annual package Pearl meeting. Maybe someone could close the door. I hope that there are also people following on the stream, at least that was the idea. Yes. So for those at home, we could do a usual introduction for those who want to say their name and wave into the camera so that others also know Speak. who are here. I'm Gregor. I'm Sartore. I'm Dominic. I'm Lucas Kanashiro. I'm Rhonda. I'm Christian. I'm David Bremner. I'm Clement Nadens. I'm Intri. And I'm Nico. So this was this was the quickest introduction right. we've, <laughs> we've, ever, we've ever had. But I have a surprise which is not in the agenda. So last year was the first time that uh, Lucas was here in this buff, and he was in the group like, I don't know, six months or so, already very active, and you have been totally active across the whole year, and since some days you are a Debian developer, so I think that's a reason to congratulate you. <laughs> and I have a small gift which was donated by, by Medak. And I thought it might be nice to give this to the newest DD in the group. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, so this agenda is mostly copied from last year. What I've uh, listed here is uh, the topic of sprints, which we had and which we might want to have again the low-hanging fruit sessions, the status of the team as a team, maybe Perl 524, which is an important topic for the group, and, well, some other issues where I might have some ideas, and where others also might have some new things to bring up. Is this something we want to go with? Is there something important mm -hmm. missing? Is the order yeah. okay? Some yeah. Good. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, sprints. There was one sprint in Zurich, the end of May. Does someone want to give a, a quick improvised summary? <laughs> it was attended. It was attended by six people in the end. Hands up if you were at the sprint. And missing from the room are Alex and Axel. Um, Alex has well, we've drafted a report which has now gone, I think, to the oh, somewhere the sprint mailing list and the team mailing, the team mailing list. list. Uh, and I guess there's a li little bit more to do with publicizing that. Mm, um, yeah, might be good too. I think Alex is going to do a mm, mm. bits bit entry. But, uh, so from my side, we worked on Perl 524 and QA rebuilds as a kind of parallel topic. So that was a good good progress there. To mention what they worked on. Okay. I guess read the report. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fix some bugs and stuff. Yeah, may maybe the, the new server is something to mention. Um, so I set up an instance of Debomatic, well, with Nico's help, um, to rebuild packages mainly for the Perl 5.0. 2.4 transition, um, which is working pretty well. 
although the web interface to it is not scaling the number of, with the number of packages we're using it for now. So if we want to carry on using that, we need to address that. Um, yeah, but it's, oh, sorry, it, it, it's be rebuilding packages continuously for 524, so there's a re repository of yeah. rebuilt packages, which, which was the main aim for the thing, so yeah. it should be easier to test 524 than it's been in the past. Yeah, um, because the packages were available before, but only not only processed when I remembered, so that's good. So I guess... Well, that's moving into Perl 524. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can publicly thank the University, uh, the Eidgenössische Technische Hochschule Zürich and our sponsors. Yeah, thank you. And it worked out quite well. Okay, so uh, during that camp, there was also a kind of a sprint. So there were four people already present, Intri, David, and me. I think we met four times for coordination meetings and worked on well tools like the HMCPerl, package Perl tools. Intri reduced the number of uh, unreproducible builds to almost zero. And there's a draft report which I should probably send out at some point. I was waiting for feedback so far and then forgot about it. Yeah, I don't know. Do you want to add something about that camp? I cleaned up. I, I cleaned up one Deb Cherry using repository, so it no longer made Gregor sad. Um, that was my <laughs> big accomplishment. <laughs> Keeping Gregor happy is, is an important goal. <laughs> okay. So that was the second sprint of this year. I mean, kind of step camp. Um, so I put here the question next year, question mark. Maybe we can get a quick... Um, a uh, round of feelings. Do we want to have a dedicated sprint again? No, I, I, I felt that generally the, the sprint was very productive. Um, we didn't have any, well, we had some sort of big topics, um, but also quite a lot of general collaboration on sort of smaller kind of ongoing tasks. So I definitely support having another one if my main concern if there was one would be getting more different people involved in that process. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure what the best way of doing that is. Um, but mm -hmm. Yeah, very much agreed. So uh, as long as there are people coming to the sprint, I think we should have one yearly or something like that. So that seem, and the timing seems to be quite good with in May or so because there's a, usually the new up Perl upstream release is mm. coming out in May. So it's good for preparations and all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we might want to note down that we are targeting May 2000. 17 for a sprint. The question of getting more people or um, broader diversity of people is a good one, I think. Um, do we have ideas on how to involve more people? So, uh, Alison suggests having a, an event at YAPSI, which is where, geographically? Uh, YAPSI NA just finished. Uh, YAPSI NA just ended, but YAPSI EU should be coming up. 
I think, uh, if I remember correctly, we had this discussion before of uh, uh, having the sprint in parallel to some conference, and we said that we'd rather have it separate because it's easier to 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 focus to work. like a Debian packaging training session at Yapsi and a little bit of recruiting effort. Ah, yeah. okay. Because you have Perl people who don't know anything at all about Debian that might be a good sort right. of uh, place to pull people in more than Debian people who don't know anything about Perl, I think. Right, Yapsi is for recruiting new members. Good idea. As far as I know, Alex Montada is giving a talk t at this year's EU mm -hmm. about Debian and uh, about Perl upstream and distributions. Mm -hmm. So you could also have a sprint around. I mean, not in parallel with the conference, but before or after. I mean, mm. DevCamp style. Yeah. I mean, then it's not so distracting. Uh, Yeah, I guess we could keep, keep the idea in mind and see when, when DebConf is next year and when YAPSI EU is next year. Or YAPSI NA in, in theory, but in practice most of us in, are in Europe. So, so yep, YAPSI is normally three days, is that right? So three, so three plus two is kind of... A week. <laughs> it's a man manageable length. Mm. So Knowledge Junkie reports on IRC that Yapsi this year is in Cluj, Transylvania. Mm. So that's a cool place to go. Sure. Okay, anything else on Sprint? Or shall we move on? Right. Okay, low hanging fruit sessions. So this was the second year where we had those Uh, monthly meetings on IRC with the idea that people uh, meet at the, <coughs> the same time to squash some simple but may maybe tedious or boring issues together or at least in parallel. This year we were, so I looked a bit at the, at the report. So this year it was at the 21st of each month at 18 UTC. Uh, eight of the ten planned meetings actually happened. Two were cancelled. One because most of us were at the sprint in Zurich. And the last one was just before Deb camp and I think there was nobody. Okay, so some statistics. On average there were six and a quarter people which also includes people who said hi during this time. In total, four, 14 unique persons over these eight meetings, which attended between one and eight times. The only one with eight times is Nico. <laughs> <laughs> and each of those 14 persons uh, participated, uh, well, three and a half time on average. And the topics were, well, mostly packaging, like getting new upstream releases packaged, fixing auto package test failures, working on RC bugs. But we also had some discussions uh, around 522 transition or the aftermath and cleaning up, uh, sprint planning. <laughs> Where do we sleep in Zurich? <laughs> yeah, about how to handle some bugs, about hardening flags. We had one, one discussion. Okay, so that's my uh, looking back. I don't know if, if others have some uh, comments on the, on the past here. Was this useful? Was it fun? Was it, I don't know, distracting or difficult? I found, personally, I found it useful to have a certain time to, for, for online discussions, uh, real-time discussions, but uh, I didn't really do much, <laughs> much of actual work on those. But uh, yeah, I guess it's sort of borderline whether it actually worked. I mean, there were very few people generally, people 
present generally, but uh, yeah, I guess we could go on with those for the next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with the, the kind of vary, varying amount of activity, uh, but the cost of them is quite yeah. low. And I think even if it's just talking to each other and it's, a, use, it's a useful time to do that and in a slightly more coordinated way, but, um, I support continuing them. Okay, so this <coughs> summary is, um, it's not clear if it's a huge success, but uh, also the costs are so low that it's worth going on and having these coordination meetings, maybe. Mm. So it's not the only reason I didn't participate. I was also very busy and so on, but the timing is not very good or was not very good for mm -hmm. right. North American time zones. So. I would say, I think we had this discussion before, and I said you should do what works for the group who are really doing work, but anyway, that's an excuse for me not to participate. Right. Yes. So to uh, come back to last year's discussions, in the year before, we alternated between two different times on each second month, and the result was that uh, the European friendly time attracted way more people than the uh, America's friendly time, which didn't really work out. So this year we tried it with only having one time. But of course, that's the, the question. If we continue, then which time do we, do we pick? If we stay with the 21st, which is just arbitrary, but why not? Hmm? then it's still, do we want this time, do we want to have a different time, or do we want to have some time changes, or uh, alternations again? I'm not sure how much time we had today, but I su suggest we discuss that on a mailing list or something. The timing, I mean, we could do voting here, but I, not everybody's here anyway, so. Yeah. I guess I just volunteered, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll try. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Good. <clears throat> Team status. Oh, cool. Comparing to last year, who was that? Merci. Okay, so we have this script committer stats, and I ran it some hours ago. Uh, and it, well, it checks the amount of commits per person in the last 365 ta days in all our packages. Repos, which were 56 persons versus 58 last year. Okay. And there were 14 people <coughs> who had more than 100 commits in this time frame versus 11. Okay, so it's a, a rise in the more active people and more or less the same in the overall number of, of committers. I mean, there were years when it was more like 70 people, but at least it's constant compared to last year. Uh -huh. Cool. Uh, yeah, I guess there's not much more to say about this. The other, the other thing is uh, we have a to-do item on our open task page since, I don't know, 2011 or something, that's uh, about pinging members or pinging inactive members, which Ansgar did once, and I don't know how. And since then, we are waiting for <coughs> someone to provide some tooling and since, um, when was it? Wednesday something? <laughs> we have a script. We as in the Package Ruby Access team. Thanks to Christian and thanks 
to you for making it universally usable. Great. So I wrote a very small wrapper to pass our <laughs> team name and repository <laughs> file path. So we can run this uh, script now on, on Alioth, which outputs a CSV file of the accounts of project members on Alioth who have not touched any file in the last two years, I think is the, is the cutoff. Um, <coughs> where the, the outcome is something like 207 minus three lines headers or so, so 200 of the, I don't know, 270 or whatever members we have seem to have not touched any file in two years. Toby? Yeah. Uh, are you coordinating that with uh, MI18 as well, or are you planning to do that? That's an excellent idea. We are not, not so far yet to do anything with, with it, but yeah, maybe we should. So next step which are possible is to send a mail with some mail merge thingy. David has already committed a, a Python script <laughs> that does the mail merge. And I, <coughs> I started to draft uh, the, the text for the mail, which we will at some point um, finish and write, put it into YAML so that the Python script can read the CSV. Yeah. So it's worth pointing out that there's many reasons people are on this list. There's a lot of dash guest accounts where people now have DD accounts. Lucas, for example, but many others. Um, so it's not necessarily that there's 200 MIA people here. I mean, there's just... Alioth accounting sloppiness, basically. Right. So that specific case should be filtered out, right? That's, and that's easy to filter out. Mm. Or not. People don't necessarily have the same account names. But it's not such a big list that you can't look for obvious duplicates if you've got their real names. I mean, the, the question is um, a bit about <laughs> the ob objectives. I yeah. I would also like to, to remove those guest accounts, which are not used anymore. And it's a question of the wording of the mail, so I, I tried in my first draft to, to make it very clear that this is about this account has not been used for this purpose, and it's not about you are inactive or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my first reaction when I saw the list was also like a bit like, mm, wow, really, all these people, and, and I know some of them, and, mm, mm, but um, I'm not sure it leads anywhere to go through the, the, the list manually and think, oh, uh, I, does this person have a different account, or do I know them, and do I want to talk to them before sending them a mail? Or? So the, it's one, that's a one-year cutoff, is it? Two years. Two years, okay, that's, yeah, that's better. It makes more sense. Um, but for the people who became DD, stripping off the dash guest and checking that cross should be fairly easy and, and scriptable. Yeah, but the problem is that the, the bla guest and bla don't necessarily match. There are people yeah, yeah, but you still can weed out yeah. at least a few of them. Uh, yes, but then I would still like to remove the guest account from the project. Yeah. But hmm? I think the idea there is that you do that before sending the mail, so you send less mails. And just remove the guest account? Yeah. Well, some people might still be using their guest account because they are too lazy to update their .ssh config. Yeah, well, yeah. after two years. Okay, anyway, another, another thing to consider, yeah, uh, yeah, right. Later. We're getting into bike shedding. Since uh, somehow it took me three days so far not to do this, probably we shouldn't complicate it any further. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, I mean, the general question is, is, is it okay to to do this? Does it make, make sense? Is it a good, good idea? And is it okay for you if, if David and me try to get this finished before leaving Cape Town. Sure. Okay. Do you want any 
reservations you want to express? Or? That's agreement. Yeah. Okay, so thanks again, Christian. And you get back a, a mail template in perfect English. <laughs> Good. So, maybe something more technical. 12.524. Is there something we need to know, to do? Well, it was announced that we're transitioning for stretch, <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> so, um, I think we're in reasonably good shape for the transition at this point. Uh, the wiki page that's on Gobby has a status um, do you want to talk about the specific? Yeah, well, practice? there's, uh, we filed, uh, I'm not sure how many, how many, there are less than 100 bugs about 524 transition, probably on the order of 50 or something. And I think there are no, well, the worst blocker I think is data alias which I yesterday mailed the upstream author Zephram about. And then there's NetS and MP, but that should be trivial to fix. And so, uh, yeah, I think it's, <coughs> as long as we can do something about the data alias, I think we're, we should be fine. So right now there are eight bugs, eight fa fail to build bugs, which is actually oh. pretty good compared to last year in terms of... Are you numbers. counting all the forwarded ones as well? Those are all forwarded. Oh, one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there should be something like eight yeah. important parts. So data ali alias, alias uh, algorithm permute, net SNMP, devel, begin lift, lexical underscore, net SNPP, parse, HTTP user agent, text, sprintf, so basically, I think we should probably file a transition bug for the release team this week and then uh, look at the blockers and yeah. look at what we can do about those. Um. And uh, I guess that would make it for name in August or something like that. Yeah, I mean, on the packaging side, I don't think there's anything outstanding mm. to do with, I mean, the upload is the, the package is in experimental, it's working as far as we know. So it's really so it's just as you say, dealing with those those two widely used packages. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Yeah. <coughs> Sounds like a nice transition. So you're going to file the transition pack and then we yeah, are maybe announce a time frame or yeah or whatever help is needed. Cool. <clears throat> okay, so this is now a collection of, of mm. other miscellaneous topics. Sta starting at the bottom, uh, this was something that Salvatore mentioned today in the release team talk. How do we go along with uploads during the upcoming freeze? So in the past there have been different strategies from going ahead with uploads, except for very important packages. During the last freeze we really didn't upload anything, I think. Except for some mistakes, maybe. So I guess basically we haven't upl uh, we don't have uploaded much during the last freeze, and then we had a huge pile of new upstream version, and it was I guess quite hard to bring that down again. So I just put the question: uh, What we do? Maybe upload to experimental or go on with uploading uh, modules without C code or, uh, yes, I don't know what. Can 
someone articulate the downsides of uploading to experimental? So if we upload a thousand packages to experimental? Well, it's basically useless because then someone has to manually upload all of them to unstable later. Could be scripted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also the packages are not going to get tested against each other that way. So they are, it's just an overlay for unstable. So, so they are all sort of individually there. Yeah, I guess I don't have a good answer to that either, but uh, I'd rather err on the side of not uploading them than making trouble for the release because we have created something in unstable that can't transition to testing and it's blocking something. I mean, we don't, we don't have to decide on a on a fixed policy i mean we we can i can think we can rely on uploaders to exercise their judgment about what's appropriate to upload to unstable during the freeze just as they would for other packages so there might be a higher bar to uploading some types of changes but i think in in general it's you, you can kind of judge that on a case by case basis so leak packages in general right. are fine right mm. yeah and lots of our packages, not all of them, obviously, but lots are leak packages. So. Mm -hmm. so it's use your judgment, be careful, and err on the safe side as <laughs> rough guidelines. I guess. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Good. Um, yeah, the other two points here were, well, ideas that Christian and, and me had at some pub meetings. So the, the second one, language packaging skills exchange. Uh, we found that we were sitting beside each other and talking like, well, do you have a tool in the Ruby group and a Perl group for doing this and that? and thought maybe we should do it during the day instead of at the pub. So, so the idea is that <coughs> to, to have a buff, probably it's called, where the purpose is not to come up with some um, big guidelines and grand schemes that all teams must change and follow and whatever, but just to sit down and, and show tools to each other? So I think it's a good idea and I wanted to mention that Sean Witten has basically uh, forked DHMake Perl uh, to work on Emacs packages. So there's a, a direct connection there. Um, so this kind of cross-pollination is interesting, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. so. The no one think, thinks that's completely insane. So I guess we too can file the, uh, can request the buff the, with the content team. Um, yeah, maybe then you can also spread the word or if you have ideas who to invite from other language packaging teams, like, I don't know, Python guys maybe or would also be interesting. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> another is issue which I titled now salvaging the Perl packages. Uh, well, that's a bit mm, me being me becoming grumpy sometimes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so last week I I NMU'd two or three Perl packages which are not maintained by us for. Uh, using that helper for something. And I realized that I didn't even have to download the source package because the last upload was also an NMU done by me last year for 522. Uh, and I think it's a bit 
silly to do it this way and I think either we or I or whoever wants to participate should just move those packages in the into the team keep keeping the maintainers upload inviting them and whatever but just maintain them properly instead of doing this continuous NMU dance. Mm -hmm. And if there's some, some broader consensus, we maybe should as well announce this somewhere, be it at the Lightning Talk or on Devil, or I don't know. We have a process for dealing with inactive maintainers already. I'm not sure that we need a separate process. We might need to invoke it more aggressively, but I mean, adopting packages if they're inactive can happen, but I wouldn't want to try and sidestep the existing, mm. I'd say, policy or for that. Yeah, my thoughts also. So, so we should rather go for getting the packages, packages orphaned first or something like that, I think, or at least not, at least do the MIA process in, in parallel or something, so so that it doesn't happen that they their being M MIA goes unnoticed because we mm -hmm. took over mm -hmm. their packages or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, doing this in parallel sounds sounds, mm -hmm. sounds good. Uh, waiting for the MIA team to really orphan the package is something I'd like to avoid because then I'm. Waiting again. Um, with the current MI process, my understanding is, if even if you start the process by mailing the MI team, you will not get a reply. So will, you will not know uh, what the status is. <laughs> but the, f the first part of the process is to contact the maintainer, and we yeah, haven't. E and I think we <coughs> haven't proactively been doing that before. So the first thing to do would be identify the set of packages that we think we're talking about and then contact those people, right? Uh, you, you can um, yeah, always contact the MIA team. So I'm in the MIA team since maybe a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and so feel free to contact us. We, we have a more streamlined process now. I think uh, uh, has been also a result of uh, earlier DEPCONF and we are lately following up a lot of people which were not triggered and yeah just give us a, a note uh, forward uh, a, write a mail to mia uh, at uh, qa.debian.org and uh, we take a look at this you can also log on on qa.debian.org and take a look in the database if that one is already uh, recorded and sometimes, yeah, the list in that one is quite long, uh, so it's quite evident that you can just NMU that one, and, but in parallel, we should, to avoid pissing off people, uh, follow the, the process here. And I think in total, uh, from report to uh, forced retirement, let's say that way, it's not more than nine months, and uh, until you uh, get the Packages or found, I think it's two or three months maximum. So, and in the, in that time you can just NMU that one. And if that maintainer did uh, did an upload maybe five years ago, yeah, go for NMU zero day. You won't care probably. So I just wanted to remark that it you you said we weren't really contacting people proactively, but. NMUing somebody's package counts as contacting them. If they don't notice that, <coughs> that's not really our fault. I mean, if you don't notice your package being NMU'd, that, that's not that somebody's not trying to communicate with you. I mean, it's that you're not interested in the package, or you know, you have other things, you're not able to respond or whatever, but. Sorry. 
for the record. That's something that's changed in the past 10 years in Debian. So it's now considered perfectly acceptable to make your NMU submission the means by which you communicate with someone who seems to be MIA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's not the, not the part I'm having issues with. Um, I don't hesitate to do any NMUs. <laughs> So I'm, I'm more thinking about this, taking it to the next level and lowering these boundaries of, of maintainership, actually. I mean, off records, maybe, but. So, okay, so we just need a, a sense of what the scale of this is. And do you have any, uh, do you have a, li a list of packages at this stage or maintainers that this would apply to? Not really. I can, it, look, it, I can look in my NMU's directory. <laughs> so it, it sounds like we should write some scripts and then write some scripts to email those nice people <laughs> in the MIA team. Or maybe semi-manually, not well, manually, but yeah. That's just a task mm -hmm. that should happen. Well, I have a fine Python script that I can let you use. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can write a Ruby script to get the CSV to feed into the Python script. I think we should really try to work Node.js in to show that we're hip. <laughs> We've done that with the Debomatic web interface. <laughs> okay, so it seems we have to look into this a bit more before having a clear group consensus or group policy, and we have to think about this, getting to M MIA earlier, finding these people who wish and Okay. I, I think there's consensus of aggressively mailing MIA of Perl-related packages. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? No. Okay, so that's I'd, a start. Yeah. I would just say let's avoid having a policy that's <laughs> team-specific if we can. In general, actually, but particularly in this case, where I'd like to join there and say, um, on the Ruby extra stream, we see similar issues, obviously. So your policy would not be team specific, but maybe it works for larger teams. It's it's more practice than policy, but yeah. Okay, good. So, and now we have two minutes left, and we are more or less at the end. I mean, there's this link to our standing open tasks page, which is a placeholder for we can now use the last two minutes to discuss any other issues, topics, which someone might have in mind. We don't need, we don't need to talk about this here, but I could use some advice, um, and it's not a package that you maintain, um, but it's somewhat loosely related. And that is, uh, I'm notionally the maintainer for the Parrot package, um, which I built up a team who took over maintainership, but they were mostly interested in Rakuto. So when they shifted to the more VM from Parrot, they stopped maintaining the Parrot package. It hasn't been updated in two years. Um, there have been continuing releases of Parrot. I don't know how valuable they are to anybody. I don't know that anybody's actually using it. I'm wondering whether I should remove it um, or update it. But it doesn't have to be discussed here. Just if anyone's interested, I would appreciate mm -hmm. advice. Mm -hmm. Good. Anything else? Nothing on IRC? Ah, uh, Christian. I have a small interest. Um, in the actual Perl package, in the sense that I'm one of the commenters of the Ruby package, and it appears that um, our teams work a bit similar in that the interpreter itself is not part or is not managed by the same team where that manages the libraries, and uh, I was wondering why that is in the Perl team. <laughs> because we're very happy with the job that Dom and Nico are doing with Perl, I think. Thanks. 
Yeah, I guess it's mainly <laughs> any help is welcome. So, so if somebody's interested, then yeah, we'll happily accept mm -hmm. contributors, uh, team members, and all. So I have one comment from IRC. Knowledge Junkie wants to relay his thanks to the team for help, advice, and tips over the last year. Yeah, and thanks to Nick for all his work. And thanks right back at you. <laughs> Good. Shall we wrap up? Call it a session. Okay, then yeah. thanks for coming, for relaying, for typing. Thank you for sharing. No. <laughs> thanks to the video team and to the media team. <laughs> and my mom. And UTC and. It's just turn off the speak. UTC or UCT? UCT, yeah. Well, the time zone is <laughs> And see you at lunch and. Dinner. Dinner. The other one, right. Dinner and breakfast, and you and you see.